Back in the day, no, I would do it in utter silence. But lately, I've been writing with music on. And what I've been writing lately is very um, sentimental and nostalgic. So it, it helps to be able to listen to music that makes you kind of sentimental and nostalgic and or makes you feel young and stuff. It feeds it. So this time around, I have. Like Red State, I wrote in fucking silence. A Zach and Miri I wrote in, in relative silence as well. The thing I'm working on now, man, is being fed by music. Hit somebody was fed by music. As I'm writing Hit Somebody as well, it's always fed by period kind of music and, and music that I know is going to wind up in it. And I remember when I was a kid, I read like the liner notes in this John Hughes CD. I think it was for the Breakfast Club soundtrack. Might have been for Weird Science. But he said in the liner notes, he goes, music is never an afterthought with me. Like, I write with these songs of mine. I write them into the script, so he wanted to shout out the people, blah, blah, blah. And it never was that way for me. When I was a filmmaker, music was always an afterthought. And it wasn't until later on I got better at my job or better at my craft or you get older and stuff that suddenly you realize, oh, my God, this will fuel it, man. Like, this actually helps. So if I know going in, it might actually help a scene. You can structure a scene in the script in your head. Like, Zach and Mary... There's a, a, you know, something I never could have done in fucking Clerks or Mallrats or Chasing Amy. There's this little montage moment with uh, Banks and Rogan where he's, she's kind of testing him and we're using the song Hey by, uh, by the Pixies. And I, I love that song and I've kind of wrote it into the fucking script. And I remember on that particular one, we're doing slow-mo, really fucking strong focus with long lenses on Banks and she's sitting on the couch. And she has to do very subtle movements because we're going slow-mo. We don't want to be too fast, too slow or anything. But the, by virtue of the fact that the camera's kind of coming on a track like this, the focus, length of focus, the, you know, on your focus pole, it, it was very, it was like two lines. Normally you got a little bit of range. So the focus pole, it was like, bear with me, man, because this is like fucking, you know, targeting fucking Kirk and Spock as they fall through space. You know, get them back on the deck of the Enterprise and shit. So we had to go a few takes. I think we wound up going 30 takes on just a shot. That shot of her, like, kind of moving her arm and looking at him, making eye contact and slowly shaking her head no. Each shot was 13 seconds long. But then you go to the focus puller, he's like, you get it? And he was like, I, don't, I can't guarantee it. We should do another one. And so we kept going. And, and Banks got a little frustrated, but I kept, like, going over and being like, I'm sorry, it's such a pain in the dick, but... There's this thing I have in my head that I wrote this whole scene to this fucking song beat, and so I'm just trying to nail it, and this part is like at this line and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, okay, okay. And we got it. We eventually got it. And when I showed her, like, the next day, I cut the scene together and showed her. She was like, oh, my God. Like, I'm so glad we kept going. I was like, yeah, it was that moment that I was trying to get to. So that, that one I, I, I kind of wrote with that song in mind. But now I just write not so much going, like, this song's going to be in the movie, but just songs that make you feel anything. Because once that gets that blood going, it's like you said, it's all kind of the edges, frayed edges of the different, of the same coin. If you get any artistic blood flowing through you, it'll charge your battery as well.